Hello and thank you for watching Club Marine TV. I'm Mark Rothfield and this is the Quicksilver 875 Sun Deck. The name might ring a bell, but certainly not in this genre of family day boats and overnighters. So settle in as we go for a spin. The name Quicksilver is best known here for selling a range of parts, accessories and inflatable dinghies. What you may not know is that Quicksilver has been building the Arvor brand here for some time and they've kept that badge in Australia. It makes sense because we've known Arvors for 25 years and they're highly respected for their fishing boats. The Quicksilvers that we're talking about are more your deck boats like this cruisers run about open boats that will still sit nicely alongside the range. Of course, Quicksilver is another name for Mercury, and that gives you a clue that the parent company is the Brunswick Corporation. So you're talking Mercury engines, Bayliner, Sea Ray, big companies like that. It means Quicksilver has lots of resources for R&D and large scale manufacturing. This boat, along with the other Quicksilvers, will launch at the 2022 Sydney International Boat Show, and there was a fantastic response to them. Starting aft, you're looking at the twin 250 horsepower V8 Mercury Verados. 500 horsepower is the maximum for this hull. All Quicksilvers come packaged with Mercury motors, which makes sense. You can have singles from 225 horsepower up to 400 horsepower. The single engine may look a little bit lonely on this three meter wide transom. Other things I really like, you have extendable boarding platforms. Makes it a lot easier to get aboard and there's also easy access across the boat. So when you're boarding, you can just slide across to this boarding gate. You can have up to 10 people aboard under CE category B offshore requirements or 12 for the inshore Cat C. So the cockpit has to be versatile and convertible for dining, socialising and sunbathing. In this cockpit you have everything you need for a great entertainer, starting with this L-shaped lounge aft, which can have a table. There's also fold-out seating either side, so when you have lots of people aboard, they can all sit around the table and socialise. That's classic European, but it's also something we love to do in Australia. So this CT backrest also folds out either at 45 degrees or completely horizontal and then you convert this whole lounge into a giant sunbed with direct access to the transom. There's also this huge lazarette underfloor and what you're looking at is the Flexi Teak option which comes as part of a prestige pack. That pack also includes little touches like upgraded upholstery. How's this for clever design? The helm seat slides forward on rails to reveal this galley unit. It comes with a cutting board, has running water in its own sink, and there's also the option of putting a two burner stove here. The helm console is offset slightly to port, and this asymmetrical arrangement leaves a much wider starboard side deck. It's also nice and safe, there's good handrails either side as you come up. This giant sunbed is what gives the boat its name and the designers have worked really hard to achieve it. There is lots of flare above the waterline. The sunbed is 2.25 by 2.25 square metres and that's as big as it gets in this class. You can sit here when the boat's running because there are these nice sturdy stainless steel rails but it's not a bow rider and so you'd want to do that in really good conditions. Special mention to the anchoring system as well. There's a recessed locker underneath this sun pad. You can option that with a windlass and remote control. You can also operate it from the helm. The anchor is actually suspended on a roller out the front, so it's really easy to use at any time. Access to the cabin is through this generous companionway hatch, and any thoughts of it being a day boat evaporate. It really is surprisingly spacious and cosy down here with accommodation for four people. First up, you get this nice four-seater dinette. It converts to a huge double bed as well. And when you're lying in bed, you get fantastic views and also ventilation through these big hull windows. What's more, you can option it up with a microwave, a 12 volt fridge, 
a 21 inch TV, air conditioning and even a diesel heater. Plus you find an enclosed bathroom with an electric flush loo and a shower that can run optional hot water. The helm station is quite spacious because the boat's not confined by a trailable beam. You get upgraded steering wheel in this case, a 12 inch Simrad screen and the gauges. You can have the option of twin nine inch screens if you prefer. Obviously it has the twin binnacles with the two motors and it's optioned with the joystick piloting system that comes with Mercury. Fantastic when you're in berthing situations. You have a double helm seat, so two people can sit facing forward. These have bolsters and they're really nice and secure. You sit quite high with a good view over the bow. Another thing to mention is this windscreen. It's got sturdy handrails, full wraparound, so you get good wind protection when you're driving. First thing you notice is you sit nice and high and dry above the water with really good protection. Controls, everything falls really easily to hand and you can feel the punch just starting to come in with those V8 engines. They've got so much thrust in them and you can just feel that acceleration as soon as you hit the throttles. As we talked about, you can have single outboards of as little as 225 horsepower. Personally, I think for an eight metre boat that weighs over three tonnes, and then you add 450 litres of fuel, 100 litres of water, plus all your family and friends and gear, that's asking a lot of a small motor. I would really be looking at the twin installation. Maybe V6s if you want a slightly better fuel economy, that will drop you just below the 40 knot performance too. So it's a fairly good compromise. As we see it here, this is the maximum horsepower, five horsepower and you will enjoy that. The thing I really like about these big 250s is at cruise speeds of 30 knots they're actually more economical than the 225 at the same speed. They're barely ticking over at four and a half thousand revs and you could go all day on that. But if you do need to give them some punch which I'm about to you can just feel that acceleration the boat can accelerate all the way to over 46 knots, which is incredible for a Sundecker. That's real sports performance. Dropping it back now, we're doing around about that 4,000 revs. We're doing 33 knots. It's just such an easy boat to drive. One thing, I'm not trimming the boat at all. That's being taken care of by Mercury's GPS active trim system. Makes driving the boat a point and shoot proposition. For a deck boat that looks so wide up at the bow, the handling through the corners is fantastic. Really all the action's taking place at that very fine bow, which cuts through the water. Dead rise at the transom is 18 degrees, which is still quite sharp. And where you get your stability from is the fact that the chines are nice and wide. So it seems to be a really good compromise. I must say, I wasn't expecting it to handle anywhere nearly as good as this. One thing you notice again with that extra thrust is when you go into a hard turn, there's a nice degree of slide, there's no biting of the hull, so you, your passengers will feel quite safe and comfortable. You'll be having a lot of fun at the same time. There's this real nice fusion here between a runabout and a big sports cruiser. You get that sort of comfort, the ability to ride over waves almost nonchalantly. Yet at the same time, you get that flexibility, the degree of handling, the bit of nimble reaction on the wheel. And again, you can't help yourself. You just want to keep planting these throttles and seeing how well she'll go. When you consider this kind of performance, you can see this boat quite happily going offshore. It will also be very happy in doing just your, your day runs on the harbour. Picnicking, picking up friends, going to the fish markets, that kind of thing. It's a great boat for anywhere in Australia. Rottnest Island, the Gold Coast, even the Whit Sundays where you do tend to get a bit of chop. This is just a fantastic all round, all weather boat.
While we're talking about Quicksilvers, working behind the scenes today as our camera boat has been the Quicksilver 675 Cruiser. But it's a special little boat in its own right. A taste of Europe in a market dominated by America. It's very cleverly appointed, its hull runs really beautifully through the water and kept up with the bigger boat without any trouble. It has a sociable cockpit and even a nice cabin that you can comfortably overnight in. Starting price is 108000 but options like this with the 225, the cruise pack, bow sun lounge and more, it's 145000 Pricing for the 875 Sun Deck starts at 235000 and as you see it here, fully optioned, it's 318000 Quicksilver's motto is that dreams come true. And if you dream about a day boat overnighter with strong performance, quality and safety, then the 875 Sun Deck certainly won't disappoint. I'm Mark Rothfield for Club Marine TV. Catch you next time.